Hello and welcome to Taiwan Talks. I'm Ian Kavat. Today we're discussing another war game, this time organized by an influential Japanese think tank, which mapped out a Chinese attack on Taiwan and Japan's role in it. With me to discuss this are Lai Yizong, president of Taiwan think tank, the Prospect Foundation, Ding Seng Li, Institute of National Defense and Strategy Research, Deputy Chief Executive Officer, former Ministry of National Defense, Vice Chief of General Staff, President Lai, General Li, very warm welcome to the show today. Now I'm going to invite General Li to stand with me next to some maps that we've drawn up to talk about uh, how the attack on Taiwan um, actually pans out. General Lee, you observed the tabletop exercise um, organized by the Japan Forum for Strategic Studies. Now, they brought together military, former military officers, as well as officials from three countries, Japan, so Taiwan, Taiwan and, uh, and the United, United States. States yes. Could you show us very briefly how this attack panned out in 2027 mm. during the exercise? Let's take a look at these maps. So the first one, map of the US military bases. First of all, should we understand the situ uh, strategy situation in first uh, the threat from China, more expansion to West Pacific. You should understand the area. So China now, not only the aircraft moved to first island chain, second island chain, and even they were to the third island chain. Mm -hmm. But m you should for understand the area, short range missile in this area, and m medium range in this area to the second island chain. So to the long range is here, and ICBM to move to the Quan, move farther. So first of all, you should understand the threat, mm. the area. Mm. Second, you should understand the uh, military of the United States present in this area, in West Pacific, include Japan, South Korea, and the Philippines. Mm. The but first of all is the Misawa, Tokyo, Katoya, and the Katina Air Force Base. So you should first understand the triangle area, for triangle is this way and this way to Quan. And triangle is this way, Japan to this way. They will present Japan and United States, present their forces in this area. For the Korea also, Korea is the Fusan, Pusan area and Jackson military base. You should understand in the Japan and, and Katina and Pusan, this area. For the Philippines, they also in this area, also in the Kakayang, and Subic and Clark Air mm. Force Base this way, also in this way. So in the West Pacific, you un understand the threat. Understand the threat, you will understand how to deter the China more aggressive defense. Mm. Yeah. To this way, first of all is the first island chain is the addition to the uh, Japan to Taiwan to Subic Bay. The second island chain is the here and move to here, this area to the Mariana and Quan to Palau. Mm -hmm. The third island chain is the Adisha uh, to the Honolulu to Tonga to New Zealand. This three is the defense against deter China military threat to West Pacific. Mm. Mm. Okay, right. Um, and, and so during the um, actual simulation, what did China do in terms of the attack on Taiwan? Should we? Should we back to yes. another? Yes, mm -hmm. so this way, and they will also use the first phase is the, to try to use the cyber attack to against the Taiwan area and also Japan also. And second phase, they will use the layer force just like uh, Taiwan contingencies is the Japan contingencies. Mm. The third is the full scale. It escalate all the military present in Taiwan and this southwest of the Japan islands. Mm. Are they actually attacked by missile or by, by troops during yeah. the simulation? Due to most close to Taiwan is Inaguru Island. It's just only one, mm. uh, 110 uh, kilometer away in Hualien area. Mm. So China short range missile in this area all cover. Mm. So they were threatened by China military, military threat and military attack. So not only this one in the Katina Air Force Base is the United States Armed Forces in location here and deploy here. They are also threat by short range missile from China. Mm. Now, to discuss the war games from a U.S. perspective, I spoke with Patrick Cronin, the Asia-Pacific Security Chair at Think Tank Hudson Institute from Washington, D.C. I began by asking his view on what the exercise served to highlight. Let's take a look. What the uh, war game essentially concluded was that China, 
would have a very tough challenge forcibly trying to unify um, Taiwan in an all-out invasion scenario, Kirka 2027, which was the scenario that they used for this particular game. Um, now, that is also borne out by a number of other simulations and tabletop exercises that other institutes like CSIS in the United States and others have uh, exercised over the past year in particular, thinking out about the middle of this decade or 2026, 2027 timeframe, that period of so-called maximum danger. One of the other elements of this particular game in mid-July that the Japan Forum for Strategic Studies found was the need for very close trilateral cooperation among Taiwan, the United States, and Japan, because not only are Japan's bases critical for U.S. operations, but there's really no ability to separate the Senkaku Islands, the Dayutai, um, or the Nansei Shoto, the Southwest Island chain of Japan, from a, a full-out uh, invasion scenario involving Taiwan. And it would very much trigger the collective self-defense rights of Japan. And those legal rights are always major issues for Japanese officials and decision makers uh, involving the use of force in the region. But clearly, um, this is a game that shows the PLA would be challenged in offensive invasion. Um, and it's very important for Japan to be part of the equation early on. That means even in peacetime, thinking about the mechanisms and the people who could coordinate and, and make sure that they could make decisions early on in the crisis. There were media reports that picked up about the decision making that you, you mentioned um, and that perhaps there was too much of a de delay in terms of invoking the mutual treaty between Japan and the U.S. Do you have any thoughts about that? Well, I played in a lot of uh, war games and exercises, and I wouldn't read as much into that as I saw in the media, um, <clears throat> because that can be a, an artifice of the game and the exercise, the people who are there. If you're in a real crisis and the real decision makers are faced with a need for a decision, um, it, it depends on the circumstances. It depends on the agency of the individuals at the time. However, uh, it is true that every game I've played in with Japan, uh, there are always layers of legal questions and layers of trying to forestall decisions that could escalate a conflict into deeper conflict. So it's also a realistic exercise, but I wouldn't take one simulation as the final word on what would actually happen if things really uh, became confrontational. And there I would note, um, you know, as much as these tabletop exercises are useful, the real live fire exercises that Taiwan's doing recently uh, to defend uh, Taiwan, Japan's been doing, for instance, a Talisman Sabre in, in Australia with other allies and partners. Um, those exercises are preparing the real operational forces that could be called to uh, respond and defend uh, in the event of an attack, an offensive onslaught, um, some kind of a, a escalatory scenario from, from the mainland. Um, and I think that would that shows a certain degree of political will already that politicians now and leaders now in democracies are willing to invest in making sure that their military forces are better prepared for contingencies. Do you think that the uh, interoperability between Taiwan and those other forces um, is a huge gap that needs to be tackled or is it simply something that uh, we cannot do something about? We can't. Uh, pretend that it's as easy to have interoperability with Taiwan as it is, say, with Japan or with the United States regarding U.S. forces, because there are constraints on how directly we can uh, operate with Taiwan forces. So um, we'll be there defending Taiwan if they're attacked, but at the same time, we can't expect perfect interoperability. So we're going to have to be taking these coming months and years to, to do the best we can to ensure that whatever lack of interoperability exists, uh, it still builds in a complementarity among the forces. That is, there may be some, some things that Taiwan will be doing in their self-defense um, that we won't need to do. And there'll be some things the United States or other forces outside, if they come to the defense uh, against an, an, a, a, a Taiwan that's attacked, um, that they'll be doing uniquely. That was Patrick Croning of the Hudson Institute speaking to me earlier. President Lai, now before we deal with the collective um, self-defense issues relating to Japan, um, during this exercise, you actually played the role of Taiwan's president. Could you share with us some of your observations as you play this role? Yeah, first of all, I will say that this, although uh, people talk about it as a war game, 
but it's actually a political simulation. Uh, under the uh, 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 war scenario in which Taiwan was under attack, and of course, uh, there are several steps of the uh, development. Uh, first, ta when Taiwan was under the uh, cyber, uh, cyber attack, and then it gradually evolved to the full military attack. And uh, during those times, uh, there were the uh, circumstances at Japan's uh, island close ta to Taiwan that was also under the blockade and then attacked. So the issues uh, basically is, uh, especially from the uh, Japan side, mm. what they wanted to do is that to test the uh, current Japan political uh, mechanism. Right. Uh, during the, uh, the wartime in a scenario like those, how that uh, Japan's uh, current political system will be able to respond mm. and what are the defects uh, that's going to be there. So the issue that I have uh, immediately about uh, this uh, war game is that um, uh, apparently uh, Japan, uh, this is the first war game that uh, after the uh, three uh, important strategic documents released by Japan at the end of last year, uh, the uh, Japan side apparently they have more leeway, but they do not know how to mm -hmm. utilize those leeway mm -hmm. and to make a better and a faster decisions mm -hmm. they had. They so had so the have. leeway to use the self-defense forces. Uh, yes, yes, for self-defense forces and also the when and how to employ, mm -hmm. uh, deploy those uh, forces for what purposes. Mm -hmm. Under the uh, U.S. Japan defense uh, guideline, uh, there were the uh, exen existential uh, uh, circumstances as well as the important influence important influential uh, situation. Uh, both of them, uh, the especially the existential uh, situation where Japan uh, is legally, uh, they can deploy their self-defense forces to area and uh, to the circumstances in which Japan was not under direct attack. But then the uh, decisions uh, makers uh, play in a game as a Japan prime minister mm -hmm. uh, suddenly started to uh, puzzle about if Japan is not directly under attack, mm -hmm. how, uh, wha on what little ground that uh, Japan can actually deploy the SDF, uh, right. self-defense forces. Mm -hmm. So that's the first puzzle that we found out. Okay, yeah, so um, very interesting there that basically this was a more of a political, generally, more of a political, political. exercise. Yes. Um, do you agree with that rather than the military um, operational and very specific tactical uh, war games, perhaps that we're used to from the US? Uh, due to uh, this exercise, TDX uh, divided the tactics level and strategic level. We, this time, we joined the Japan whole the exercise is the certain topic, strategic level. And I believe this is no other, it's the kind of the war game, no limit. So what the Japan, Taiwan and United States want? This is decision making. Mm. How they decision making and they pursue what kind of the uh, process and policy. Mm. So they have the two very factor, very important factor is the during the uh, contingencies and crisis, how to solve the problems. Three government, Taiwan, Japan, United States, how to solve the problem. Second is very not is very important is mm. how to win effectively. Mm. This is another issue. So this is. Mm. Uh, War game TTX is main focus on this one procedures, mm. and so I believe it is there's no any other restriction. And how about what President um, Lai mentioned about the? Um, essentially, we're talking about the Japanese constitution, isn't it? Tell us a li little bit more about you know why is Japan in this very particular legal situation in terms of whether it can use its uh, self-defense forces. So obviously, this is. Uh, a result of the post-World War mm. uh, situation. And they have divided different situation. So when the, uh, they mention about the Jap uh, Japan fight the Chinese force against and their fishbowl and coast guard invade the southeast of the Japan's islands, the situation is different. Even their constitution is limit, it limit their force can mm. do. But after your countries, your territories again attacked by other enemy, mm. how do you do? Mm. They were discussed with the United States mm. to against the force. Yes. So President Lai, you mentioned it. You mentioned that there was a hesitancy, or maybe um, not, not. There wasn't enough clarity on whether this was an existential threat to Japan itself. Yeah, I would say that uh, uh, when generally talk about uh, in, in one of development, that is the uh, China actually deploy uh, forces to land. Uh, on mm. the Senkaku Islands, mm. in which uh, there's no one there. 
Right. So uh, in our general view, we will think that uh, this is basically composed as a direct attack against Japan. So it should trigger the. It should trigger the yeah. uh, uh, the collective defense, uh, collective self defense mm. uh, treaty, and uh, uh, Japan should be able to deploy all the uh, means to defend against it. But mm. Japan wasn't. Right. Uh, the decision maker <laughs> wasn't. Right. The, the issue is that uh, he deve he has tried to separate. Uh, the actually armed uh, attack actually happen, mm. or it's just a landing. They're just l direct land on the no man's land. Right. So that is, mm. that that is the issue that started oh, 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 uh, puzzled in a lot of people, including the U.S. and Taiwan. Because it wasn't inhabited. So that was his distinction. However, if it was on it the mainland, they wanted, they, it seems yeah. that they wanted to uh, uh, identify a mm. real military or a fire has been sh uh, fired against. Uh, the Japan side oh, or to not. Wait, to wait yeah. for the fire to be shot. That's right. right. So right. so we believe it is so so much of the restrictions right. on the, uh, they mm. have on themselves. And, and why is that, um, President Lai? What, what is it historically? Just just to tell our international audience. I think the uh, uh, one of the important issues is that the uh, Japan uh, is a norm-abiding country. Mm. And basically it will follow whatever uh, it has the, uh, the uh, SOP or the uh, uh, regulations that allow them to do. Mm. So the uh, uh, when th uh, a situation like this actually happened, uh, they wanted to know, or the decision makers uh, wanted to know mm. whether a fire has actually uh, shot at mm. them, or it's just a uh, accidental <laughs> landing. <laughs> I uh, sometimes that really puzzles a lot of people uh, mm. outside. Mm. But of course, it also uh, connected with the uh, uh, the personal character of the decision maker themselves. Mm. Uh, mm. If it is Abe Shinzo, uh, unfortunately he was assassinated uh, last year, mm. Abe Shinzo would be no hesitant mm. uh, <laughs> and make decision. Mm. This is directed against uh, against Japan so that mm. we have to deploy uh, the, the things that we need to have. Generally. Just like sometimes the military action and operation cannot wait, cannot wait, no time to wait. Mm. Just like the uh, Speaker uh, Pelosi visited uh, Taiwan and China short-range missile hit the easy of the Japan. Mm. The people cannot tolerate, mm. cannot tolerate your territory or your water attacked by other country mm. missile. Mm. So uh, just like the military of the Japan should be very quick, quick reaction. How to protect their country? Send mm. us Taiwan. We should protect our Taiwan. Mm. The Japan should protect their territory. Send. Mm. So military decision, I believe, the other from this time, the TTX, they will make a decision, the tempo, quick. To, to change the situation and the policy. Mm. General Lee, if I can um, ask you, you mentioned mm. earlier that there were no limitations. No limitation. No. Due to <laughs> issue, very quick to change, the situation change. Mm. The due to the st threats increased, the si situation change. You should change your policy. Mm. You should change the policy to adapt the situation. Mm. Otherwise, you will do any action and military operation were too late. Okay. And, and so, President Lai. Yeah, the issue is that uh, the, J the whole exercise this time is to test about Japan its own uh, react, uh, the, uh, uh, how Japan can react under the current circumstance in the political systems. So the, uh, uh, of course, we all can demand that Japan, you should do this, you mm. should do that. <laughs> mm. But uh, the whole exercise is about to, to test that the under the uh, uh, circumstances, under this current system, uh, what Japan uh, can have and what kind of defects uh, mm. they are going to have. Mm. Uh, so the, uh, I think it is important for Taiwan to really observe and learn mm. uh, the kind of behavior that the uh, Japan's uh, um, uh, decision makers as well mm. political system allow them and then tell them that uh, 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 your system right now um, has uh, disclosed or exemplified uh, this kind of defects. Mm. And uh, I think that if you did not or would not uh, fix these problems, uh, what, that, uh, what kind of the uh, consequence that will affect both Taiwan and the United States, mm. especially on the defense of Taiwan. Um, I mean, sort of like th that introspection as well, though, President Lai, I don't know if you also meant that in terms of Taiwan's own decision making. I mean, what I'm hearing from you both is that there was almost this paralysis in the, in, in the process because of Japan's you know, fear to, to maybe escalate. Um, you know, as an observer, uh, General Lee, you know, this was the first time that Taiwan was involved um, um, ever in this, in, in this sort of exercise yes. with, with Japan. Um, you know, what did Taiwan's participation lend? What did it contribute to, to this exercise, do you think? 
First of all, Taiwan's more understand the Japan's the, the decision making, right? This is the uh, during the uh, contingencies and crisis. Second, I believe that Taiwan more understand Japan and United States their mutual assistance to defense treaty. Mm. So how they reaction, how they kick off the operation, how they can support mutual. And third, I believe that Japan and Taiwan more understand how to communication with the, your society consensus mm -hmm. and your your people. And Japan is the, there in the broadcast and military, all in the TTX room. So everybody is the very easy communication to their their people. So Taiwan learned this one. It's very important for us. Mm, okay. President Lai, I mean, um, communication there, General Lee mentioned, um, with the general public, of course, very important. How about the communication between Japan and Taiwan? This is one of the weaknesses <laughs> that you identified, that there's, there's no actual official security dialogue. How damaging is that? How vulnerable is that? Well, under the circumstances, if there's no uh, Japan-Taiwan security dialogue, then the, a lot of issues that uh, we uh, need to communicate with them at, at, at the wartime, uh, that will be very costly, uh, especially that uh, we need to tell them everything from the beginning. Uh, like in the first uh, scenario about the cyber attack, uh, we need to tell them that uh, how many stages and how many phases and we identify about the cyber threat. And then even in the uh, arms attack situation, we also need to uh, communicate and tell them uh, under what circumstances uh, we are going to uh, uh, level our defense and our contingency to like uh, DEFCON 1, DEFCON 2, DEFCON 3. Uh, there's no common understanding of uh, Taiwan Japan. Hmm. But then uh, when I returned, uh, I was told that uh, um, uh, the situation is not as dire as I thought it is. So that could be some comfort. But going back to the issue about communication, I think the most important thing I, uh, another un important thing I took from this uh, journey, this exercise is that uh, JFSS, that is the organizer for this exercise, spend a lot of time and uh, the way that it developed this exercise is to have this exercise to be able to communicate with the public. So that every decisions, every discussions, even between Taiwan, US and Taiwan, Japan and, and the trilateral uh, uh, the meetings, we have the uh, uh, camera, we have the press directly aiming at each one of us. Mm -hmm. So the private conversation and public conversation, it's all there. Mm. I think the, uh, this is a uniqueness about this e exercise, mm. because part of it is to communicate to the Japan public mm. that, first of all, the situation is, uh, is more dangerous than we thought, and then uh, the kind of the political decision that uh, the politician needs to make. Uh, what are they and uh, what are the, the defects our mm. current system is, and also uh, to ensure uh, the, the awareness level uh, of the uh, Taiwan Strait security mm. among Japanese public. Public mm. uh, will be able to raise up, General Lee. So on that, you know, um, with the general public being able to see sort of every single detail, that transparency that President Lai just described, the camera on your face, you can hear everything, all the, every discussion that's made. What would the Japanese public conclude from this exercise? I believe the Japanese during this time, the threats increased, especially from China and Russia and North Korea. Four of the Japanese four understand their threats continue increase. So during this time, the TTX the four and the public immediately to tell the everybody, all, all of the Japanese people, I believe that during this exercise, all the Japanese and society consensus will increase, mm. consolidates. Mm. So for Taiwan also. Okay, so, so it's to get the public behind actually using force yes. to a defend an existential threat yeah, of Japan correct. to basically pave the way for politicians to do that, for, the, for the officials to do that. Is, yes, that, correct, is that what correct, you're saying? Correct, okay. yes. Despite the US's many war games, this one caught China's attention. President Lai, can you explain why? Let's first listen to a soundbite from the China's foreign ministry, it's from uh, Mao Ning. She begins by saying that Japan committed crimes while it colonized Taiwan, and, and thereby she questioned Japan's, quote, credibility and justification to meddle in Taiwan affairs she ends by saying this 奉劝日方, 停止在台湾问题上玩火, 须知玩火者必自焚. President Lai. I think that uh, because this war game is not this is not the first time, this is the third time in this war game. But the in previous two war games, the China did not say anything like those. Mm. So I think it has to do with the uh, the publicity. Uh, that this war game intended to for the public and uh, how that attracted uh, uh, 
uh, attention within Japan society and mm. how that translates and or the, um, uh, spill over uh, to the Chinese uh, uh, foreign ministry their attentions. Mm. So I think this is more about the publicity that it received mm. uh, rather than the uh, the threat level mm. that the China feel because this war game is basically a political mm. and not the military operations. Mm. But does it indicate, you know, that their, their, their level of alarm or the threat that they perceive, does it indicate to you that Japan, US and Taiwan is going in the right direction? Uh, we, uh, we hope that it's, uh, it will uh, prevail and uh, uh, for <laughs> the way that it go forward, uh, especially this time, it's a very basic US, Taiwan, Japan, the three side will just work together to defend against Chinese attack on Taiwan. Um, <coughs> but I would say that uh, uh, this is not the first time for the mm. war game. Mm. So the previous two war games, China did not say anything, mm. and only this particular one. Mm. And I, I look at the scenario, this, war, uh, this time the war game is not that different from the first time. Uh, about the first uh, first uh, war game exercises, mm. so I will say that uh, the probably the only uh, viable explanation of the Chinese attention is that the publicity it uh, generated. Mm. Generally, final thoughts. It so the, this is the I believe that from the military side, this is the kind of the message with this, mini uh, is message with this. So Taiwan, Japan, and United States uh, military cooperation. In we are on the water, on the air, C two control. So this is the reason air, airspace in this area, airspace is international airspace. Water is inter international water. So this is very signal to th with this Taiwan matter is, is not China, in internal matter, mm -hmm. it's internal matter. I see, so it offers sovereignty. It's yes, very um, good, offers sovereignty, sovereignty yeah, Taiwan. Taiwan right, okay, correct. thank you very much. President Lai, General Lee, thank you for your time today. Okay, thank you. Thank you. If you liked our show, please search for us on YouTube, give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching our show today. Stay safe and see you next time.